there's a lot of dining options on Arvia and from my experience there's a fairly consistent pattern to the quality that will become clear in this video. I'll start with the restaurants included in the cruise fare and then move on to the premium speciality restaurants. You'll see the food and menus in each venue too. We'll start with the main dining room Zenith and Meridian downstairs but they're both part of the same restaurant. They're open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You can generally just show up when you want for breakfast or lunch without waiting long. But dinner's different to many ships as you don't have an allocated table throughout your cruise. Instead, you either pre-book between 5.30 and 6.30, or after that you need to join the virtual queue on your smartphone or tablet, or just physically queue. Now, I had the breakfast in here a number of times and it was always pretty good. This is the P&O Cruises breakfast at the top of the menu here. Breakfast service was generally fine, although occasionally you could end up waiting a while for toast, tea or coffee. Lunch is nothing extravagant, which should be self-evident from this shot of a chicken sandwich, but it actually tasted good. The menu changes, but it's a minimal selection. I found lunches aren't consistent though, and another day I had a very average gammon steak. A dinner provides better presentation. This Singapore-style chicken satay starter was nice, and the pressed confit duck leg main wasn't bad at all but it can be hit and miss in here. In this case, the sirloin steak was quite tough and the cherry cheesecake I had later didn't taste the cherries at all. Service is generally okay, but every so often it can be patchy and you end up waiting for one thing or another. The menu changes every night. The keys are three counters offering fish and chips, Asian dishes and a roast carvery. They're open from midday until 9.30 p.m., although the carvery is also open for breakfast from 6.30 till 10 a.m. and does a typical English breakfast. I use this a lot and it was consistently good. The carvery has all the basics you'd expect. You've got carrots, parsnips, Yorkshire pudding, and usually it alternated between turkey or lamb. Then there's stuffing, roast potatoes and cauliflower, but it was all good. And here's the fish and chips where you have a choice of mushy peas or curry sauce. Again, always good quality. The Sixth Street Diner is a classic American diner. It's open for brunch from 10 till 2 and then dinner from 5.30 to 9.30. As with the main dining room, you can pre-book a table or use the queuing system. I had the all day breakfast in here a few times and I really enjoyed it. They used proper American bacon, which is a nice touch. Although on one day they used UK style bacon that had been way overcooked. Now for dinner, you might think an American diner would serve things like burgers and hot dogs, but it doesn't. It's more of a Southern style menu. The Reuben croquette starters here were disappointing. And the mains that followed of New York strip steak and the Nashville hot chicken sandwich were only okay. The service was also iffy with orders being taken quickly, but then the wait for drinks and the food was way too long. Some other tables were complaining about this. The Olive Grove is a Mediterranean themed restaurant open for dinner only. Again, you can book or queue in the same ways as the previous restaurants. I started with Italian antipasti, which I'd say was a six out of 10. It was a bit of a letdown. For main, I had the beef buco, which was pretty good, a comfortable 7 out of 10. I didn't film it, but the lemon meringue tart I had for dessert was also quite good. But the service in here was pretty slow and we didn't go back. Now the Horizon Buffet is huge. Walking through it will get you no end of exercise. It's open from 6.30am to 1.30am. Whilst it can get extremely busy at times, I never had a problem finding a table. You just keep walking and walking and eventually you'll find a whole empty area of like 20 tables. So no complaints with that. Breakfast is served up until 11 a.m. which is great after a late night. It has everything you'd expect and was fine, but it can get quite manic even up until 11 a.m. So I often preferred having breakfast in the main dining room instead.
The selection at lunch is good. There's all sorts to choose from. They have the healthy stuff and the not so healthy. It's all here. Again, the quality overall was fine. I'll stop talking for a minute and let you soak up the calories on screen. In the interest of giving a detailed review, I tried as many of these desserts as I could. But by having so many, I couldn't actually remember what I thought of each one. It was an unfortunate error on my part. Sorry. A Taste 360 is in the Sky Dome and serves pizza, burgers and hot dogs. I used this several times and it was always fine but I recommend getting a freshly made plate as the ones that have been left there on the warmer for a while are nowhere near as good. And that's a free tip, there's no charge. Just like and subscribe and we'll call it even. Epicurean is up on deck 17 by the Crow's Nest. It's really the flagship restaurant on board doing afternoon tea and dinner. It's a more formal atmosphere with a smarter dress code and good views. Afternoon tea is £17 per head, but be aware it's not a traditional menu. There's no sandwiches, for instance. Instead, it's a twist on afternoon tea, but I have to say I really liked it. The dinner is £30 per head, and it was all very good. The ox cheek starter I had here wasn't overly filling, but the quality was there. For the main, I had the lamb and everything on the plate was great. I really couldn't fault it. You get a choice of sides and I had it with the thick cut chips and broccoli. I'm told the Black Angus sirloin steak was also excellent. The apple and juniper berry crumble was also superb. I like a sweet dessert and this had the sweetness and tang that was my idea of perfect. Epicurean is definitely one of the best dining experiences on board with attentive service and great food. Onto the keel and cow, this is at the top of the atrium on deck eight and has a gastro pub menu. There's no fixed cover charge, but you pay for each menu item you choose. They're open from 11.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. and run the same menu throughout the day. They actually serve breakfast there too, from 7.30 till 9.30, although you do pay for it. A full English is 3.50 I think, but I never ate breakfast here. Now the Prime Minister Burger is their signature menu item and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. By any standard it's a decent burger and the fries were good too. On another visit, I tried the blackened chicken and the flavor was superb. The only trouble I had was finishing it all. It's a whole chicken, so you need a serious appetite for this one. Keel and Cow is definitely worth a visit and the menu gives you plenty of good options. The Beach House offers Latin and Caribbean flavors. It's located in the Horizon Buffet and is sectioned off in the evening. So it's a casual atmosphere in here. The cover charge was £8 per person when booked on board. The starter here was the pork chicorones, if that's how you pronounce it, which is pork belly with puffed crackling, and it was great. For main, we had the asado chero, which has a £5 supplement and includes beef ribs, garlic chicken tenders, chorizo and picana steak. Literally everything on that plate was good. The desserts didn't disappoint either. 
Bottom line, the Beach House was flawless with prompt service throughout and great flavours cooked to perfection. It's a 10 out of 10, especially for the price. The glass house is in the atrium on deck 7, just beneath the Keel and Cow. It's open from 11am to 11pm and has a tapas style menu. The menu gives you pairing suggestions with wines and it all adds up to a different dining experience than you'll get anywhere else on the ship. There's no cover charge, you just pay for what you want. Now here I had the strawberry gazpacho, ham and iberico with tomato bread and Iberian pork meatballs. I could take or leave the gazpacho but the rest was great. I went back another day and tried the beef main, which consists of veal cheek, roasted shallot and coffee beef short rib and oxtail bonbon. It was another win. This is the British retro dessert, which is made up of a jammy dodger cornflake tart, Bailey's chocolate truffle tea cake and arctic roll with champagne rhubarb compote. Now the desserts might be designed to share, but I wasn't going to pass on any of these and surprise, surprise, I loved it all. As for ice cream, they have that covered on deck eight and up at the Sky Dome. I can recommend the Bonoffi and Salted Caramel. A single scoop was £2.50. Overall, Arvia has such a wide choice of dining options that you should be able to find something that's right for you. But there's a marked difference between the included and premium restaurants in both the quality of food and to a lesser extent the service but then trying them's half the fun if you found this video helpful then hit that like button and subscribe for more videos coming soon thanks for watching